When I was a reporter in France in the 1950s, one of the things that fascinated me was the complete enchantment that the French had with the automobile. The French felt that they had invented the automobile. And they were just bonkers, that's all they did. I mean, you had no speed limits on the highways in France. So when a Frenchman was going down the highways, he'd go at absolute top speed. And one of the funny things that would happen was that uh, they'd come tearing down the road and they'd reach a railroad crossing and a train is coming by and they'd all get out of their cars. They had to wait till the train went by and they'd usually stand on the side of the road and make pee pee while they're waiting for the train to go by. And then they all had a phrase that says, this goddamn thing is screwing up the, the average. They always kept track of their averages. <laughs> you know, they were going to go tearing down the seat. They were seeing who, how fast they could go, and they'd have races on the, on the regular highways. So here they were, absolutely bonkers about cars. And I got to cover some car races. There were car races all over Paris, all over France. Uh, they called Grand Prix, as you may have but there was one in particular that was the sort of apotheosis of the car races. It was called the 24-hour race at Le Mans. Le Mans is the name of a town uh, on the way to Brittany in, uh, in western France. And cars would come from all over Europe, or western Europe certainly, to race in this race. and. Uh, the key to the race was it was a 24-hour race. The cars would start off at 4 o'clock in the afternoon and they'd keep going around this circuit. Now the circuit was not a, it was not a track, it was a cordoned off piece of road. So, and the other thing that was interesting about them was that the, the cars were of all kinds of different horsepower and, and makes. So you had these terrifically powerful Jaguars and Mercedes and these dinky little Renaults and so forth and they're all going around at the same time. So here I am up in the stadium in the press box as the race starts and around they start going around the guess. And the plan is that they go for two hours, they start at four in the afternoon, they go for two hours and at six o'clock they drive into the pits to get re, you know, get regassed and get tires changed or whatever. A whole crowd of people have now descended onto the area in front of the track. They're, they're called rail birds. They're leaning against the rails to watch the race. So as the cars are coming in for their pit stops, the Jaguar driven by a guy called Mike Hawthorne, makes a veering turn and hits a Mercedes driven by a guy called Pierre Levesque. Now the Mercedes was a really new model and it had an aluminum body. So when the two of them hit, the Mercedes exploded and the whole inside of the Mercedes, all the nuts and bolts and the engine and everything flew out all over the place and it was like machine guns mowing down all these people who were hanging on to the rail. So I'm sitting in the, in the, in the, uh, up in the uh, press box and I see this thing going on and I say, my God, this is it's like warfare. You, you know, even from a distance I can see people with their heads rolling off. And so I go down to look at it and sitting next to me is a guy that Sports Illustrated had sent over to cover the race, who was a real idiot. And he said, hey, this is screwing up the whole race. I said, of course it's screwing up the whole race. <laughs> this is going to be a horrible uh, episode. So he sat there keeping track uh, of the times and so forth as if the race was going normally. And I rushed down and saw all this horror. Well, my that now, it's, it's Saturday. The race had started at 4 o'clock and it's now Saturday. I was working for Time Magazine and Time Magazine goes to press on, on Saturday night. 
So my big problem was to get out of there, to get out of there and get back to Paris so I could file my story so we could get into the magazine before the magazine closed at Saturday night. So getting out of there was very difficult because, as I say, it wasn't a track. It was, it was cordoned off fields. So you had to bump across the fields. And the ambulances that went to pick up the people who were hurt shoved a lot of people into their ambulance. They bumped all over the fields. And a lot of people who were in the backs of the ambulance died from being bounced around uh, while the ambulance was trying to get them to hospitals. Anyway, I got back to Paris and I filed my story. And one of the interesting little sidelines to that is uh, the, uh, there was the guy who later becomes the publisher of the New York Times uh, who was out there. He was then starting out as a reporter in Paris. Uh, and uh, he was out there, but he didn't file this. He didn't write anything about it. He just went. He went home, and, and the New York Times had to use a, it, news agencies for its information. But it was a terrible, terrible. And one of the things that the French didn't want to do is they didn't want to stop the race because they're such cheapskates. They realized that if they stop the race, they have to reimburse everybody for tickets. So they kept the race going. And of course, half the people died because the race never stopped. It was a ghastly story.